Welcome back everyone. This is Faith on Fire and I'm Brian and this is going to be a very interesting video where I have to go back and start this video by correcting a video I did about Calvinism and the dandelion because the dandelion wasn't the best example of a weed to use. So I'm going to replace that with something else and explain the reasons why. Um, and then I'm going to show as it relates to that analogy how even with a YouTuber you probably know a very well, a pretty popular channel and someone you may have watched. It's an independent fundamentalist Baptist missionary and preacher that many people from many Christian denominations watch and admire. And you'll see how he too, despite saying doctrine matters and talking about how he's against Calvinism from time to time, actually teaches it and has been affected by it, brainwashed by it as, you, as it were. And I'll show you that example and who that is. Lastly, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a comparison between Christians who celebrate Christmas, even though it has pagan roots that you can tie it to, versus the difference between that and those who believe in Calvinism. It's worth waiting to the end to see that analogy and understand it. That one's quick, but it's at the end, and it'll really teach people a lot, I think. So enjoy the video. Here it goes. In this video, I'm going to make a correction on a recent video I did right here is the thumbnail, Calvinism and the dandelion. Now, little did I know when I did this video that there are actually redeeming qualities of dandelions while there are none of Calvinism, which is right out of paganism and Gnosticism. I know a lot of Christians are fooled by it, and that's why I did the video. The video creates analogy. I created the analogy that warns us as Christians about this creeping, uh, invasive infiltration of Christianity, leading people astray, that the leaders of Calvinism from many, many centuries ago, from the very beginning to the present day leaders are all, well, they, they know that they're not trusting in the Bible. And they are purposely using the Bible to try to point people to pagan philosophical views that are unbiblical. And they're trying to insert them in. It's very dangerous. It is infecting seminaries. So therefore, it's affecting those who come out of it into ministry and become pastors. And therefore, it's affecting churches. Churches are getting split. Families are getting split over this because Calvinism, people who are really solid Bible-believing Christians recognize it's totally false. What real Bible-believing Christians, regardless of the denomination you're from, all agree on is the core essential of the faith, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are not saved by grace and then given faith as Calvinists teach. That's Ephesians 2. We are saved by grace through faith. And it's an undeserved grace. We didn't earn it. We don't work. We don't believe in work salvation. We believe that it is when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. It says that in Acts 16. It says that, that it's available to whosoever in the whole world. In John 3.16, everyone knows John 3.16 for the most part. But there's many other places in the Bible that it says Jesus died for everyone. That when he is lifted up, uh, that he will draw all men to him, not just the elect. Right? And yet Calvinism teaches what comes out of Manichaean Gnosticism and some other pagan religions of old, their views that they try to insert into Christianity. And now when they read a certain Bible verse, they manipulate it and twist it to say, no, it doesn't mean what, what, what the text says. It actually means what we teach you over here. By these brilliant philosophers and men that were wise and enlightened from old, we can go turn to like Augustine or John Calvin or even currently John MacArthur. Right. And we're going to trust their words over the word of God. That's what they do. And it's really sick. And, it's, and so I'm warning people about it. But I used the dandelion to do it in this video. And I realized um, I got to choose another weed. Someone warned me about that. And they gave me the example. And it, it, can you picture what this weed is? Can, did anyone know what this weed is called? Let me tell you, this weed is called Creeping Charlie. I should have used that weed. It describes Calvinism perfectly. And I'll explain what it is in for a second. And by the way, after I explain what Creeping Charlie is, I will also show you an example of someone that many of you may know. If you watch Christian YouTubers, you may know this person. And I'm going to show you how this independent fundamentalist Baptist missionary and preacher slash pastor has spoken out against the Calvinist teachers, saying he doesn't agree with their teachings. But in fact, he has been brainwashed by it and indoctrinated. And I'll prove it. Just hang on for that. So, um... First of all, Creeping Charlie, what's interesting about it is it's like, it's like an ivy type of weed. 
It does no redeeming quality. It literally, if you have a beautiful lawn and this gets introduced to the lawn, you can say goodbye to your, your lovely grass. You know, it's going to snake its way through the grass, growing further and further, infiltrating into it, and it's just going to take over your lawn. And it'll even grow up and take over your shrubs and your bushes and things and it's going to ruin your lawn and pretty much when you go out there to mow your lawn instead of mowing grass you're going to be just mowing creeping charlie okay and you'll be able to keep everything at one level but when you look close you're going to see it's not grass so much as it's a bunch of uh little little leaves and it's this little ivy stuff and it's everywhere and it's very hard to get rid of Creeping Charlie is a perfect explanation of Calvinism infiltrating and taking over seminaries and churches in our Christian world today. It's not what we want. It's not pure Christian, uh, Bible-believing Christianity. It is pagan. It is false. The five points of Calvinism, tulip, total depravity, uh, unconditional election, limited atonement, that's the one where Jesus didn't die on the cross for everyone, but only the elect, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. Not one of these five points is biblically correct. They're all wrong. And they're all interconnected. Total depravity is the cornerstone of Calvinism. Now, they have some other distinctives that are outside the five points we could talk about, but I'm not going to do that here. And I'm not even going to go into debunking total depravity or any of the other points. I'm going to do that in other videos. And so we'll go through the Bible and we'll go through it very carefully and we're going to see how each one of these points is false. But the truth is, if even one of them is false, they're all false. You really only have to prove one of them false because they're all so interconnected that they, they, they flow together and they work off of each other and they're interrelated. So um, there was a video once where John MacArthur and R.C. Sproul's were seated together and asked if anyone could be anything but a five-point Calvinist. And on a future video, I'm going to play this video clip, but I'll just tell you really what they conclude in this. Their point is, no, you can't. So if you're out there and you believe that, well, I don't believe in limited atonement, but I believe in some of the other points of Calvinists, even John MacArthur and R.C. Sproul don't agree with you. They say that you can't. If you believe in just one point, they say, if they can get you to believe in one point of Calvinism, they can get you to believe in all five because they're all interconnected. And they explain that. I already knew that, but here's the good news of that. If you know that part of it, if you know that's their teaching and that's what they believe and that's true when you really study it, then you can also know this wonderful truth that if you can just simply debunk one of them and, and see it's not biblically correct, it automatically eliminates the others from being true as well. If one of them is wrong, they're all wrong. Anyway, and they all are wrong for sure. Now, uh, Creeping Charlie makes a better weed analogy for the infiltration of the Christian church. Now, let me show you how that has affected one well-known YouTuber. Let me pull up his uh, doctrinal statement of faith. Okay, here we go. Who's heard of missionary Spencer Smith? He's got a well-known YouTube channel. He's particularly well-known for um, being against contemporary Christian music. He uh, also does a number of series on, um, it's called Third Adam, and uh, it's basically about the occult um, and its infiltration, the New Age stuff and all kinds of occultic stuff that's infiltrating the church. It's in interesting how much he feels like the occult has infiltrated Christian music. Um, pagan views have and, and false gods and false teachings and other things have infiltrated Christianity to lead people astray. And he doesn't even see the most obvious plain thing that he's been led astray by Calvinism. And he has sat there and talked about, at times, John MacArthur or others and said, well, you know, we have distinct differences in our doctrine. We don't believe what they believe. Yeah, he does. And he has a plaque on, on the wall behind him, uh, a poster, that you know, as it were, that says, doctrine matters. And it's a bit of a mantra for him. He's always repeating, doctrine matters. And he's right. Doctrine does matter. So my question is, why is he preaching and teaching the doctrines of Calvinism as false as it is? So here we are. So just in case you wonder what I'm talking about, we're going to scroll down. You can always go to this, this uh, site and read it for yourself, but we're going to go under man. We're going to read uh, this section right here. This is uh, Spencer Smith here. We believe that man was created in the image and likeness of God, but that in Adam's sin, the race fell, inherited a sinful nature, and became alienated from God. Huh? No problem there. That sounds right. It is. But he goes on, and therefore man is totally depraved and of himself utterly unable to remedy his lost condition. And by the way, he gives a few Bible verses that talk about the first part of what he did there and one that maybe slightly you could 
maybe possibly say it has something to do with total depravity, but it doesn't. It, it's just the Calvinist view of interpreting a scripture wrong. So really, there's nothing here that actually validates from the Bible totally depraved as a Calvinist would teach it. And a Calvinist would teach it exactly the way he just described it. Utterly unable to remedy his lost condition. John MacArthur put it this way. And I will play this in a video. I'll play John MacArthur saying this in another video when I cover total depravity. But I'm going to begin that video by letting John MacArthur define total depravity, so I'm not defining it. He's the leading voice in Calvinism, so let him define it. But I'll tell you in this video what he says. He says that total depravity is the universal condition of man in a fallen state, dead in sins, that they have a total inability or unwillingness to respond positively to God. And in fact, will only do what Satan wants them to do. So the key words in his definition are universal, meaning it affects everybody, and total inability to respond positively to God, which gets you to the third one, unwillingness, which is irrelevant in his definition. I point that out in the video I'll do that. Who cares if you were willing? If you have no ability to do it, then it wouldn't matter if you're willing or unwilling. You can't do it. So therefore, universal and total inability are the key key terms that he applies to total depravity, which means that God must pluck you out of this total rejection of God in every respect and make your spirit alive, in other words, regenerate you, and then give you faith and grace. Right? That's, that's the difference. And he does that only for the elect that he's chosen from the beginning of time. Now, this idea comes straight out of paganism. This is not a biblical concept. Yeah, you can find the word predestinated and elect and chosen in the Bible, but it doesn't mean what I just described. And total depravity, you won't find anywhere in the Bible or anything that describes that. It's just not there. But I'll be doing that in a separate video. So don't leave your comments here complaining that I don't know what I'm talking about. you got to wait for the videos where I show you I know what I'm talking about and from the Bible perspective why total depravity is wrong. That'll be a whole video on just total depravity. So it'll be coming. Now, I want to leave this last thought. As we see Calvinism infiltrating seminaries and churches more and more, and it's all over YouTube, and it's all over websites. So when you go to Google and you search something about Christianity or the Bible, just expect the first page of results that leads you to websites that describe the, whatever you're asking about. Chances are the first full, full page are going to be Calvinist websites. They've been brilliant about getting their word out there and their teachings out there ahead of solid Bible-believing Christians. They just have. And so, and I believe Satan has something to do with that. I mean, obviously Google is not controlled by Christians, but heathens. So no wonder they're pushing a heathen paganistic view of Christianity to lead Christians astray. There's a plan in this. Satan is involved. There's a spiritual battle at play here for the hearts and souls of man. And, you know, Satan's got a plan not just to lead people into staying astray who are lost in the world and the world's values and false religions, but he's, Satan's got a plan for attracting Christians out of solid Bible-believing Christian into something else, Calvinism, for instance, that just basically cuts off any future benefit they can have to advance in the kingdom of God. And, 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 and in fact, being an agent of Satan by preaching what they've, been, what they've been taught by Calvinists and converting more Christians and lost souls, not to Christianity, not to Christ, but to Calvinism. That's the game plan. So let me explain the pagan thing real quick, and I'll, I'll end the video. There are Christians who make fun of other Christians who celebrate Christmas because they say you're celebrating a pagan holiday. Now, think about that for a second. The pagan roots of Christmas have very little to do with the Bible-believing born-again Christian who celebrates the birth of Christ today and calls it Christmas and celebrating Christmas and he is the reason for the season and so forth. Those who have the priorities straight, who recognize what the Bible says and says, we're going to celebrate what the Bible says about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was, in fact, God incarnate. He was born. He didn't come in like Adam as a full-grown man. God could have done that. God chose to put him into a family. He started as a baby. He was born into this world. There's a whole outside thing. I won't talk, but that's the way God and his sovereignty chose to redeem the world, the world through his son, Jesus Christ, who was born to celebrate the birth of Christ is important for Christians. And if we call it Christmas or something, who cares? It, it's, what we, it's how we define it that matters and what we are really celebrating, the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's not what Calvinism is doing. Calvinism isn't taking something that was maybe once pagan and redefining it so it now is 
purely a biblical teaching. They're taking what's a purely biblical teaching and denying that and now claiming that it's really what the pagan teaching is. See, it's the exact opposite of the analogy I just gave you about Christians celebrating Christmas that once was pagan. The Calvinist is literally rejecting Scripture and going back and saying what, what Scripture really means, instead of defining paganism into something it's redefined as Christian, they're taking something that's Christian and redefining it as something pagan. Complete opposite. I hope people understand that. That is so important to get when it comes to the dangers of Calvinism. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And just keep in mind, if you agree with what I'm talking about or want to look into it further, just when you think about Calvinism and his teaching, just think Creeping Charlie. All right? <laughs> creeping Charlie is what it is. It's a weed. We don't need it in Christianity whatsoever. And uh, you've been warned. So with that, may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.